Now, what if I told you that a common 360 camera technique actually doesn't work? Now, I know that's hard to believe because this technique is so common that we've taken it for granted, but I bet you're gonna agree that there's a better technique. And this new technique will improve all your photos and videos. Now, have you heard of the rule that you should shoot with your 360 camera at eye level? It's a simple rule that seems to make a lot of sense and it's been used by a lot of shooters. But is it possible that it's actually wrong? Now, why is there a rule that we should shoot with a 360 camera at eye level? Well, let's do a little experiment. First, let's take a 360 photo with a camera really low. Got a VR headset. All right, I'm looking at the 360 photo and wow, I feel tiny and that shed looks huge. And I can see myself. I'm, a, I'm like a giant. Oh man, I, I feel so small. Like everything's so huge. <sighs> that doesn't work. Now let's try one with the camera really high. All right, let's try the VR headset again. Now I'm looking at the other photo and whoa, huge difference. Like literally, I feel like I'm 10 feet tall. <laughs> I can see myself, I'm really tiny. I mean, it, it's cool, but it's not the kind of view that we wanna see all the time. So the reason we shoot from eye level is because when we look at the 360 photo in a VR headset, we see things from that perspective as if we are at the height of the camera. So it seems to make sense that we should shoot things from eye level. All right, so let's try taking a selfie with a 360 camera at eye level. Now let's take a look at that photo with my phone. Hmm, it looks okay, but it's a little bit odd. And kind of looks okay, but I look a little bit low in the shot, as if the camera is a little too high. Now I can tilt the screen up a little bit like this, but then my feet look tiny, my head looks large, and all the vertical lines are not vertical anymore. They look like they're pointed downward. So it doesn't look great. So why is that happening? And a while ago we did an experiment, we found out that when we view things in a VR headset, then we're gonna see it from the same height as the camera's height. And it seemed to make sense that we should shoot from eye level, and that's what we did. But now the shot looks too low on my phone. Well, that's because we weren't using a VR headset to view their photo. And most people don't either. Most people view 360 photos and videos on their phone or on their laptop. And when we use a phone or laptop to view that selfie, then it looks like it was shot too high. If that doesn't work, then what's the solution? Is there a better rule? Now you probably know about the rule of thirds. It's a classic rule of composition that's actually a simplified version of the golden ratio. The golden ratio is a special ratio that occurs everywhere in nature. And artists have been using it for centuries to improve their composition. Now, the golden ratio is beautiful, but it's hard to remember it because it has such precise proportions. But we can simplify it to the rule of thirds, and anyone can visualize that. It's just a tic-tac-toe. So with the rule of thirds, what we do is we place the subject along one of those lines, or better yet, one of those intersections, like this one. Now that seems simple enough, but how do we apply that to a 360 photo or video? I mean, we're working with equirectangular images, and if we put a tic-tac-toe rule thirds overlay on it, it doesn't seem to make sense to put objects along those intersections or those lines. But what about reframed photos or videos? Now, if you're new to 360, reframed means that you're looking at the 360 photo or video as a non-360 photo or video, just like the video that you're watching now. So the question is, why would we do that? What's the point of 
shooting in 360 if you're just going to look at it as a non-360 photo or video? Well, there are actually many good reasons for that, such as stabilization or third-person view, or being able to control the perspective and show that perspective to our viewers. By the way, if you want to see other advantages of shooting with a 360 camera, then check out this video. I know it's made for the 1R, but actually the principles work for other 360 cameras as well. So how do we apply the rule of thirds to a reframed photo or video? How do we know what height to shoot? Well, we can work backwards from it. So I've got here the a 360 camera and what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot at different distances and I'm gonna look at my phone, use the live view so that I can see at what height is the rule of thirds intersection. All right, so first let's try eye level. So eye level, it's a little too low. So let's bring it down lower, lower, lower. Okay, lower. All right, so we can see that the, now my head is in the rule of thirds intersection and the camera is around my belly button, the height of my belly button. Now let's try around three feet. So this is kind of like talking distance. Now talking distance, if, my, if the camera is at my eye level, once more, I'm too low in the shot. So let's bring it down lower, 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 lower. So now, now I'm roughly in the rule of thirds and it looks like the camera is around my chest level like somewhere around here. And then finally, let's try kissing distance, like a foot away. So at eye level, I'm still a little bit low. Let's bring it down lower until my eyes are around rule thirds, like around this height. So the camera is around my nose or a little bit above my mouth level. So from this experiment, we found out that the right height is actually different depending on how far the camera is from us. Like the farther we are, the lower the camera should be. At the farthest level, at around five feet away, the camera was around my belly button. Whereas when, we were, when the camera was really close to us, the camera was around nose level. Now you're probably wondering, does it matter what aspect ratio you're using? or whether you're shooting horizontally or vertically or square? Well, the cool thing about this rule is that it doesn't. As long as you are at the right camera height, it will be at the rule of thirds regardless of what aspect ratio you're using. Now, one thing that we haven't talked about is how does this rule work with virtual tours? I mean, for one thing, there's no one in the virtual tour shot normally. You're not there. So it's not like you can position the camera at your belly button level or chest level or mouth level. Can't do that. So what rule do we use for virtual tours? So I'm going to tell you two things. First, I will answer that question in a two part video. So in part one of that video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to learn how to shoot with a DSLR, what kind of equipment you need, how much does it cost? and how to shoot it, how to stitch it, everything that you need to know. Now, the second part of that video, I'm going to share with you some techniques, including what kind of rule do you use to shoot with virtual tours? Do you use the same rule, the rule of thirds for 360 cams or something else? Find out in that video. Now, the second thing that I wanted to tell you is that if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in, that's actually what this channel is about. So yes, it's about 360 cameras, but more than that, it's also about in-depth analysis. So in all my reviews and tutorials, you're going to find some kind of deep insight that I put in there. Some kind of idea, technique that makes you go, hmm, I didn't think about that before. So check out my other videos and I'll see you in 360.